Welcome to the Toxics Reduction via Responsible E-Waste Management video series, presented to you by the Delta Institute with funding from the U.S. EPA Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. In this video, Margaret Renus, Project Manager with the Delta Institute, brings us the presentation, What is E-Waste? This content was originally created for a workshop series in Toledo and Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, hello, my name is Margaret Renus, and I am an environmental engineer and project manager at the Delta Institute. And today we'll be talking about what exactly is e-scrap and why is it important to recycle it. Just to give you a little background about the Delta Institute, we're an environmental non-for-profit located in the city of Chicago. Uh, in a nutshell, our mission is to promote economic development that is environmentally friendly. And uh, in pursuit of that mission, we get involved in a variety of projects, some of which you can see here on the slide, uh, lead certifications for buildings, energy efficiency products, projects, projects that reduce waste for businesses, uh, air quality, brownfields, uh, just a, a variety of projects there. So uh, basically, what is e-scrap? So most people are probably, if, if they've heard this term at all, are more familiar with the term e-waste. And e-waste is actually a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, e-waste implies that electronics that are being discarded are, are nothing but waste. They have no value. Uh, whereas e-scrap more appropriately suggests that there is value to electronics that are being discarded. So uh, this e-scrap, again, is a name for electronics products that are at the end of their useful life and, and are no longer wanted. And uh, they may contain uh, valuable materials uh, that often can be reused and put back into the production stream. Um, they may also contain hazardous materials like lead or mercury that it's important to manage those correctly. And, uh, and then we have a couple of different categories that we'll talk about. So just to give some examples, on the business side, you know, uh, e-waste would consist of discarded uh, computers, printers, uh, cell phones. On the residential side, you might be looking more at things like microwaves or blenders or vacuum cleaners. So what are the characteristics of e-waste? Well, there's basically three categories. The first would be considered smart e-scrap. And so uh, these are electronics that often facilitate either communication or computation or both. They're generally accepted at e-scrap collection events and uh, they're not typically subject to uh, household contaminations or organic contamination. So again, on the business side, we're looking uh, at, at things like cell phones, at circuit boards, servers, uh, cathode ray tube monitors, CRT monitors, uh, CPUs, uh, even things like wire, routers, switches, things of that nature. So uh, another category that we have for e-scrap is dumb e-scrap. And these would be electronics that typically do not facilitate either communication or computation. And they can be subject to uh, household organic contaminations. And th th this, these things can complicate the recycling process, these types of contamination. So they're often not accepted at e-scrap collection events. So from the business side, um, this category is not as prevalent as the smart e-scrap, but you know, in many offices we do have uh, kitchens, uh, so there may be things in there such as toasters or food processors, and, and offices use vacuum cleaners to, uh, to, to clean up. So there is some application here on the business side as well. And then the third category is uh, those items that are associated with electronics and are recyclable, but um, they're not usually electronics themselves per se, and they may require special care and recycling. So this would include things like, uh, on the lighting side, fluorescent tubes, uh, compact fluorescent lights, CFLs, that contain mercury. Uh, it may even include refrigeration equipment that uses Freon, uh, thermostats that contain mercury. So again, these items need to be processed separately. To give us a scope on the, the extent of the 
e-scrap issue. Um, this slide kind of shows uh, what the, the magnitude of this problem is. So this is data reported by the US EPA in 2009, and uh, we can see that in these three categories, there are millions, 47 million computers waiting end-of-life management in 2009, 27 million televisions, and a hundred, over 141 million mobile devices. And unfortunately, many of these are still being landfilled. The rate of recycling, if you look at those three categories together, is only about 12 to 15 percent. So uh, a lot of these products are going straight to landfill still in 2012. And uh, the, the extent of the problem continues to grow. And this rapid growth is driven by a few things, especially on the business side. Um, we have a constant turnover in technology, especially in the last 15 years where we've had a real technological boom. Uh, those big CRT monitors that we all had on our desks have been replaced by LCDs in most companies. Uh, the iPhone 5 is probably going to be replaced by the iPhone 6 in another 18 months. And in companies, refresh cycles or how often you replace electronics is often not tied to, to the useful life of those electronics, but to things like the financial depreciation cycle. And what that means is these electronics are often replaced um, while they're still quite useful. So this constant turnover causes this, this growth of e-scrap to, to do nothing but continue to grow. And here's an example in uh, Cuyahoga County here in Ohio. Uh, Cuyahoga County's done, done its part in terms of collecting some of this e-scrap. Uh, they do about 1.8 million pounds a year through a variety of their events and recycling initiatives.